Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. Today we are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Berkshire Hathaway, ticker BRK dot B. So this is the B shares for Berkshire Hathaway. This is a gigantic company of $685 billion operating in the diversified financial services industry. For the next few minutes, I'll discuss both of my thoughts on the valuation of this company and its business quality. Now, this one's going to be a little different than some of my other ones because I know a lot about Berkshire Hathaway already. They are basically an insurance company. They have many different insurance um, fields, property, casualty, life, accident, health, and reinsurance, but they also own many other businesses, whether that's railroads, um, mines, natural gas, energy businesses. They own a huge stake in Apple. Um, and so it's a little bit different because this is Warren Buffett's company that he's managing as a holding company. And so that affects a little bit of how the company is run and what you can assess. Now, the first thing we see, of course, is that the beta is 0.85, being a little bit less than one combined with the share turnover of 55% is rare for a company this large in the S&P 500. It suggests that that lower volatility tends to suggest higher quality. You can also see more of a longer term shareholder base with that share turnover number. Now, what's interesting here is we have return on equity. So this, these numbers look different because they are, this is an insurance company. But the first thing that's significant is you have 20 straight years of profits. There's no losses here. And um, the other piece to be aware of is at the last few years in this return on equity is the company has been required with a change in um, regulations to report fluctuations in the stock price of their holdings to impact their net income. And so now you've had what was a relatively stable and steady um, return on equity now looks much more um, variable because they're reporting unrealized gains and losses on the securities portfolio. Now, if I didn't know anything about Berkshire Hathaway, I'd say, okay, these numbers aren't actually that great. Return on equity, 10-year median of 9.5%. Um, return on assets 4.4%, return on investment 3.5%. Those numbers don't sound very good, but part of it is because of how this is being reported. Um, one thing that's excluded from their net income would be the unreported or undistributed earnings of their holdings. So they own companies like Coca-Cola, Apple, American Express. They only report the dividends as earnings and they don't report the um, other part of the earnings of those companies. So Apple earns a lot more money than it gives in dividends. So they're underreporting their earnings and that impacts what you see here. They actually have a much higher return on equity when you do a deeper analysis. Um, what's interesting though is the price to book is a 1.3. Um, the company is set to buy back, has generally brought back shares when price to book is anywhere about 1.2 and Warren Buffett's been buying back a lot of shares recently. If this PE number was real, which I don't believe it is, of 8.2, then I'd say Berkshire Hathaway is really, really cheap. I actually think they probably are cheap, but I think the real PE ratio is closer to 20 than it is to 10, and I think it's less than 20, you know, maybe in that 15 to 20 range. Either way, a pretty good price for what is clearly a high-quality asset here. The important thing that I was harping is you want to make sure that you're not growing assets substantially fact faster than like earnings or stuff like that. And they aren't. They're growing revenue faster than their assets and their EPS has grown at 25%. Now again, the 25% isn't totally real because you have this big jump at the last year um, and that's likely due to changes in the unrealized gains on their securities portfolio which is now having to be reported. But Regardless, one of the things that's significant here is you have, it's an insurance company, and what they've done is they're buying assets with their insurance float, and as this works really well as long as you have continually growing premiums, and so your float is always growing. And your underwriting profit is huge. You can see these low underwriting margins are allowing them to invest consistently in large amounts to grow their balance sheet. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button and subscribe so you can get more investing content as I upload videos each and every week discussing investments, discussing stocks, and I think you would really enjoy that. So, income statement. You can see, you know, they have net premium return. This is a big insurance operation, but they also have that net investment income. And that investment income, of course, is what's driving um, those other pieces. Now, on the assets, you can clearly see they've been growing their assets over time. This is a big use of their cash. Um, they also have these unearned premiums, future policy benefits. That's, of course, their float that's been growing over time as well. Everything here is looking good. This company is very big. 
Um, but it's a little bit not seen fully through because of how this all plays out together. Um, you can see they put a lot of money into acquisitions, a lot of money into investments. This is how the company is using it. But basically, the cash flow of operations has been growing steadily over time. It's doubled over the last decade. This company is big. Once you reach $685 billion, you're not going to be growing very fast. Their future is not going to be as nice as the past because they're just simply too big to get great returns. So if you're looking for a stock that can have returns in that 9 to 10 range, then this might be this company for you, but you shouldn't expect returns much higher than that um, simply due to size. Thank you for listening to this video. Please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. For me, I own a share of Berkshire Hathaway as a tracking position, but I do not own it anymore. It's just simply too big, and these returns on equity are too low for me um, compared to my opportunity cost. So don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for listening.